Well, here we have it from the Oberlin Review College paper. Male workers allowed into Baldwin. Unsettling residents. I'm grade 7 and buckle in, we're going into heterophobia and really some sexism from far leftists. Is it what read here? This is by a Peter Frey Witzer, who identifies as a transsexual. So, on October 7th, residents of Baldwin Cottage received an email from Josh Matos, the area coordinator for the Multicultural and Identity-Based Communities. I am reaching out to you to give you an update on the Radiator Project, he wrote. Starting tomorrow, the contractors will be entering the rooms between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. to install the radiators. This will mean they will be in your room for a period of time to complete the work. Peter goes on here, I had not been contacted about any sort of radiator installation before this email. So right away, the word update stood out to me as untrue. The horror. Or he just didn't read anything. I grew concerned reading the second line, which informed me that I had less than 24 hours to prepare for the arrival of the installation crew, and I was further perturbed by the ambiguous for a period of time. Does this person not realize installation, you you can't set it, no, time wise, you can't go bang, 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 bang. It doesn't work that way. In general, I'm very adverse to people entering my personal space. A lot of people are, you know. This anxiety was compounded by the fact that the crew would be strangers and that they were more likely to be cisgender men. The horror. The horror. Right here, sorry. Right here, his own cisphobia or whatever is coming to the forefront. Baldwin Cottage is the home of the Women and Trans Collective. The college website describes the dorm as a close-knit community that provides women and transgendered persons with a safe space for discussion, communal living, and personal development. Cisgendered men are not allowed to live on the second and third floors, as many residents choose not to invite cisgender men into that space. I was angry, scared, and confused. Right here, I'm sorry. This right here. Imagine if a white lady had said this same thing about black workers coming into her dorm. She would be called racist. And that's exactly what this person is. They are a sexist. They are cystphobic. They continue. Why didn't the college complete the installation over the summer when the building was empty? Why couldn't they tell us precisely when the workers would be there? Why were they only notifying us the day before the installation was due to begin? Again, this part right there is sorry. It's going to happen anywhere that you have installation. If something happens, the schedule gets all screwed up, and no, they're not going to be able to do it. No. Peter continues, I considered reaching out to Matos, but what would I say? The college was unlikely to address any of my concerns the day before in scheduled installation, and if they did, it would be more likely to be a passive, we are truly sorry for the inconvenience sort of way, punctuated by the insistence that I would not be ex- excessively bothered and the installation was necessary whether I liked it or not. Yeah, you want the radiator for some, for heat for the winter, or do you want to be cold? Now, if, if you don't want it and you're going to be cold, then don't, don't frickin' complain about it. The next day, I waited apprehen- apprehensively. Now, right here, their cis, cisphobia is coming to the forefront right there. The workers began installing the common spaces, and I could see immediately that they were all men. Oh, my God. God, really, you don't say. I mean, really, come on, grow up. It was clear the college had not made a special request that male workers not be allowed into the upper floors of Baldwin. Well, what were they, you know, were, was, was, it, was this person going to do the installation? Really? Predicting that they would reach my room was pure guesswork. Yeah, because construction doesn't work like, other things. No, they have to do it. They have to actually install it and problems can happen. I was trying to anticipate they were going to be in class when they arrived 
or if I'd have to welcome strangers into my room only to be ejected to allow them to space to work. When the insistent knock eventually came, they probably thought, oh my goodness, they're knocking so long, so long. Ah. I scrambled to get my mask on. Oh my goodness, no, because of COVID, I can't breathe other air. Golly, take a chill pill, dude. Repeat, get my mask on. I repeated the shout, coming through the door. Four or five of the construction workers stood outside, accompanied by someone who I could only assume, by his neat polo and clipboard, to be an emissary of the college. We stared at each other for a moment before I moved aside to allow their workers to enter. The emissary began issuing platitudes that the work wouldn't take long and encouraged me to prop open my door. I asked meekly if I could actually not have a radiator installed in my dorm. I knew the answer was no before I even said it, but hey, it was worth a shot. Because you're so scared of cisgender. Your your cis phobia is coming through tremendously, dude. You know, grow up again. I left for class, and by the time I had come back, they appeared to be done. The polo man warned me that they would return later in the week to check the installation. The horror. Oh my goodness, the horror. They're, they're going to come in and quickly check to make sure everything's okay. Sure enough, they were back the next day. I felt mildly violated. No, grow up. I don't know how many times I'm saying this one. Grow up. I couldn't help but think that there were other dorms affected by the installation. Baldwin Cottage was one of the worst places for it to occur. No, just... Uh, face palm, really. This entire thing. And they go on to ask other residents how they responded... No. I mean, right here, this part. Mess, noise, and suddenness. Okay, I can understand that. That I can understand. It was sudden. Construction can be a, a damn mess. The noise, yeah, I can understand all that. But really, grow up. No, I've had construction stuff happen every place I've lived. It's part of life. You, you, you need to understand that part. Uh, but others admitted that they weren't entirely comfortable with the installation that had been handled and the fact that they were subject to whims of the contractors. Welcome to the real world. For the most part, you are going to have that for contractors. You're going to be at their whim. Now, granted, you can have, you know, if you own your own house or apartment, you, know, you can contact multiple contractors and get the best one. Hey, that's life. If you don't own it, you're just an apartment and somebody else is doing it, you're up to their whim. One resident told me they were instructed to ask another resident to hurry up in the shower so the workers could have access to the bathrooms. I don't even, I don't understand this part right here. In my experience, if the workers couldn't hear water running, they would come into the communal bathroom as they pleased, regardless of who was occupying it. Uh, they've had previous, I don't know. In this part, no, I understand, of course, that installations like this are routine. The college needs to improve its facilities occasionally. And who am I to stand in the way of that? After all, I get a brand new spanking radiator right in time for the cold weather. But why not finish the project during the four months of the summer semester when the building is unoccupied? Maybe they did other things. Maybe they didn't know it was that bad. Maybe something happened. Why not alert us earlier to the intrusion? Maybe they did. Maybe you just didn't get it. Maybe you were ignoring the email. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I've only got one side of the conversation right here. Now, well, this guy up here, Matos, might have written other emails that you just ignored. Now, why didn't the college make the schedule detailing when the workers were likely to arrive at each dorm in each room? Again, I don't know if you can hear him with the face palm on that one. That, that That's just... Uh, I... My, my head, the brain hurts on that one so badly. It's not like... Uh, no, it's not like you're just going in and doing a quick little check on each dorm. You're you're doing stuff. I mean, even the common area. Just... Uh, pity. 
sorry for the students' families. Cisgender plumbers use male and female adapters, no doubt. <laughs> and this one. Good job, writer. Voluntarily outing yourself as a modern-day white woman crossing the street to avoid the hostile-looking black man just minding his own business. Really, that, that's what this person is. That's why I've been saying, no, it's, it's full of cisphobia, hetero, heterophobia, racism. I mean, not ra- sexism. No, he's... It is going against males, which, sorry, that is sexism. I mean, all this type stuff. Mildly, but have you ever lived in an apartment complex? You think you get all the privacy of a homeowner. You don't. Everyone deals with it. It's called basic maintenance. God, you're a child. Person, right? No, children are inherently innocent. This is a spoiled brat with serious mental issues. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people know this isn't Babylon B. This is satire. <laughs> I mean, early. Now let me know what you think. I'm on YouTube. Come on over to Rumble. Meet me on over there. Have a party. And I'll see you next video.